and get us I'm gonna go ahead and get us rolling. It's good to see the family coming out. Like I said, we really want to be together today, but uh, with the temperatures in the teens this morning and uh, with some reports of ice and things, we think we still made a decent call. So how many of y'all love the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Amen. Amen. Can we just bless the Lord for a moment and thank him for his tremendous mercy towards us despite COVID and everything else. I mean, wave at me if we know, you know, we serve a great God, a great God. Amen. Hey, we do. We really, really do. And we are glad uh, to be in God's service such as it is this morning one more time. As you all are coming in today, I want to read uh, just a quick prayer from the Valley of Vision to get us started. We'll pray. And then I just have just some encouragement for you today. Obviously not a full sermon kind of thing, but just some encouragement for you. Uh, and feel the chat's open, so feel free to, to chat with one another or put uh, praise reports or greetings and so forth uh, in there uh, if you want to. This was called Calvary's Anthem, Calvary's Anthem. And um, I liked it a lot. It was a blessing to me. So I just want to read it to you. It's if you, those of you who have Valley of Vision, this is page 314. But anyway, Heavenly Father, thou hast led me singing to the cross where I fling down all my burdens and see them vanish, where my mountains of guilt are leveled to a plain, where my sins disappear, though they are the greatest that exist and are more in number than the grains of fine sand. For there is power in the blood of Calvary to destroy sins more than can be counted even by one from, from the choir of heaven. Thou hast given me a hillside spring that washes clear and white, and I go as a sinner to its waters, bathing without hindrance in its crystal streams. At the cross, there is free forgiveness. Somebody ought to type an amen right there. Amen. At the cross, there is free forgiveness for poor and meek ones and ample blessings that last forever. The blood of the lamb is like a great river of infinite grace with never any diminishing of its fullness, as thirsty ones without number drink of it. O oh Lord, forever will thy free forgiveness live that was gained on the mound of blood. In the midst of a world of pain, it is a subject for praise in every place, a song on earth, an anthem in heaven, its love and virtue knowing no end. I have a longing for the world above where multitudes sing the great song. For my soul was never created to love the dust of the earth. Though here my spiritual state is frail and poor, I shall go on singing Calvary's anthem. May I always know that a clean heart full of goodness is more beautiful than the lily, that only a clean heart can sing by night and by day, that such a heart is mine when I abide at Calvary. Amen. Come on, let's pray together this morning, saints, and we'll go on and do a little encouragement today. Father, we are so grateful uh, just for your infinite goodness and your magnificent grace. Uh, there are no other gods beside you. You are the only true, wise, and living God, and you deserve all of our worship, all of our honor, and all of our praise. Father, I just lift up all of the families connected to CRC, to Calvary Reformation Church right now. Many are going through things. Some have lost loved ones. Some are dealing with sickness. Some are pressing through job stuff and school stuff. And some are just dealing with their own minds and their own fears about things. And Lord, help us to realize yet again that you are the God who spoke and the universe left into existence, that there uh, is nothing outside of your control, mm -hmm. that all things are possible with thee. And that you love us, your children, and we love you too. Saints, can you take a moment and just tell the Lord how much you Thank love him? Lord. And just bless Hallelujah. him for a moment. Thank you. Hallelujah Thank to you God. Lord. Father, we lift you up. We Thank just you. adore you. We love Thank you. We praise you. Uh, and we are so grateful for the blood of thy son. We are thankful for all that you have done, all that you are doing. And we give you all the praise that we possibly, come on Calvary and praise him. I know it's Zoom. I know it ain't like being in the house, but you can lift your hands at home and say, bless the Lord. You can do that. You can, you can do that. You can, you can lift up your heart and clap your hands unto Jesus and shout unto God in your own house. 
with a voice of trauma. If you shout, you might want to mute yourself, but come on and bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all you have done and all you are doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, saints, we don't have a whole, whole lot of time. And uh, that's the way it is on these Zoom things. And uh, I wanted to just kind of walk you through a few things that I was thinking about uh, just this week. And I hope that this, uh, hopefully you can see it on the screen. Wave at me if you can see that. That says seven good decisions up there. Yeah, I just want, these are just some thoughts. It's not a, like a sermon, but it's just some things that were on my mind. And uh, I hope that it's a blessing uh, to you and um, you know, kind of gets you off running into a good week. Um, there's no secret that we're living in these crazy old days. Uh, I know our leaders have been praying hard for the church and I know the church has been praying hard one to another. But uh, we're in we're in times that we couldn't have anticipated two or three years ago, uh, not just uh, as it relates to COVID, but just, you know, spiritually, morally, economically, politically. I mean, it's difficult across the board and the days are uncertain. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with uh, COVID or any other variants. I know some of you all are fighting off Omicron right now and doing a great job at it. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with world events and we don't know what's going to happen with the economy. Everything's so up and down literally week to week and if we're not careful beloved that can man it can, it can sap your strength it could take your joy away uh it could make you um a little hesitant in the things of god it could get your focus so off i mean you're so focused on the news and the news reports uh, that you can forget to preach the gospel and make disciples and live victoriously and so if you add to the uncertainty the rejection all around us of everything pretty much god has ordained from creation order to the, just the basic moral laws of God and even uh, the rejection of the local church in the day in which we live in this environment, it can be incredibly difficult to be that joyful Christian that's the light in the community, the light in the, in the neighborhood, uh, a blessing to your brothers and sisters. I mean, you really can pull back and go under right now under the, a cloud of COVID or a cloud of this or a cloud of that and make yourself really, really scarce uh, in, the, in kingdom things. And so how do you maintain your peace and contentment, joy and gladness in the midst of all this? Well, there are a couple of decisions that I believe that we have made because uh, nothing here today is new, should be making and hopefully will continue to make. Uh, it really boils down to trusting the Lord. Somebody type it in, trust the Lord. Uh, if you're sitting with somebody at, at the house, tell, tell, tell your, your wife or your husband or your children or your friend, trust, let us trust the Lord our God. That's really what it boils down to. It boils down to daily trusting Christ uh, and doing so according to his word. But, you know, because we love to teach these things out, I kind of put it in a format that has, uh, you know, I talked about seven decisions that we can make. And these decisions really, that's what they boil down to, just really giving the Lord our all. And so here, here's the first one. Trust the sufficiency of the Bible. I don't care what's going on with COVID. You can trust God's word. Amen, somebody. Right. I don't care what's going on with the White House or the Richmond house, or even in your house, right? You can trust God's word. And I know we talk a lot about this, but it, it is really, really important. It's so foundational. Uh, you can trust not just the fact that the Bible, um, you know, is inerrant or inspired. You know, it is certainly God breathed, right? But it is also sufficient. You know, God has lo loves his children enough to give us everything that we need. And so we can trust the sufficiency of the Bible. And you can do that today. You don't have to wait till COVID is over to trust God's word. Number two, you can serve and worship Jesus, who is the savior of the Bible, who is the savior that we read about. You can serve and worship Jesus, right? No matter what happens at the job, no matter what you're dealing with, with your body or the doctor's report, you can lift your hands. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're facing. You can lift your hands, whether you're here or whether you're around the world, like Brother Drew. I saw you, Drew, checking in. But you can serve and worship Jesus, the Savior of the Bible. You can pray to him. You can talk with him. You can determine to obey him. And you can build a life upon his word. There is nothing going on right now, beloved, that is stopping you from building a life upon the word of God. And one of the things that we've seen that's a little bit unfortunate is, is that, you know, the saints, not necessarily all, some of you, but just in general, 
uh, just saints everywhere have have stopped kind of living according to scripture. Like it's on like there's like this COVID pause, right? Well, why is that? You know, it, we don't have to live that way. As a matter of fact, I, I beseech you and plead with you don't live that, live that way because you'll lose your joy. You could build a life upon the word of God, upon the precepts of God. You can worship. You can pray and sing God's word, right? You can sing of the God of the Bible and you can actually sing the Bible. You can pray to the God of the Bible throughout your day. Uh, and of course, you can pray the scriptures. You can lay them out and pray exactly what God, you know, kick God's words back to him in prayer. I, you all know this one import, is an important thing, but you, you can attend a church. You can decide to be a part of a church that, that preaches the Bible and that actually believes what it says. And we hope we're that for you. Um, but if you, you know, these notes find their way someplace else, by all means, now is not the time to check out of the local church. Sadly, many have, but it's just the wrong time to do it. Uh, and you can preach the gospel of the Bible. Right? When was the last time you preached the gospel? When was the last time you told anybody that Jesus saves? Right? And, and to the uttermost, Jesus saves. And again, nothing here is new. But it's just an, hopefully an encouragement, but also a reminder because our minds are so pulled in so many different places. And then it's critically important, you can still train up your children according to the Bible. There's nothing going on to hinder that right now. You can still raise up your children according to the Bible. So I just want to give you a few verses on each one of those points. These decisions that I know you've already made, but hopefully you'll continue to make and hopefully I'll continue to make. The first one, again, is trust the word of God. You know, this book, we talked about it a lot, and you've heard this before, but there are really only three ways you can look at it. You can, you can say the Bible is neither authoritative nor binding, which means God didn't write it and we don't have to do it. You can say it's authoritative, but it's not binding, which means, yeah, God wrote it and there's some good things in there. Uh, but, you know, you, know, you just kind of do what you do and just kind of go according to your feelings. That's really popular right now. Or you can believe that what we believe that the Bible is both authoritative and binding. It comes, it was breathed out by God. It comes from him. And he requires his children because he loves us to do the, the, the you know, the pleasant ways and peaceful paths therein. And so every word of God is pure, CRC. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Hallelujah. Not some of the words of God are pure, but every word of God is pure. Uh -huh. Even the stuff we don't necessarily like, it's still pure. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God breathed it out for us, right? All, it's breathed out by him, and you can trust it. You can trust God's word. So often we go to everything else but the scripture when we're confused about what we need to do. And so we want to encourage you, go to the Bible, you know, carry it around with you, put one on your phone and have one here and read it, read it, study it, get it in through your ear, listen to it, uh, go over the things that you're struggling with, go over those things over and over again. You can make that decision again today. Number two was serve and worship Jesus Christ. Uh, one of my favorite all-time scriptures, I've read this a zillion times, Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and are for him. Now listen, listen, because this will encourage you in the times that we're in. And he is before all things. You can apply that verse across the board. He's whatever it is, he's before it. And by him, all things consist. He is literally holding everything together. He, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might have the preeminence. Man, that's the life I want to live, and I hope you're deciding to live, serving and worshiping Jesus Christ no matter what, because of who he is and because of what he's done. Oh, come on and take. Take 10 seconds and just bless him with me, Calvary. Just bless him with me. Just magnify the name of, of our God, my God and your God, my King and your King. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your blood. Lord, don't let us get 
so distracted with everything else that we forget the preeminent things, the best things, that we forget about you and who you are and what you've done or live life like you're not in total control of it all because you are. Oh, beloved, come on, let's serve and worship Jesus Christ. I'm, I can't wait to get back in church next Sunday, uh, but let's serve and worship uh, if the Lord tarries. Let's serve and worship Jesus Christ. Number, number three, I believe this is, let's build our lives on the rock of his word. Again, another verse you've heard a lot, but it means so much, particularly now when things are so uncertain and the days are so difficult. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell not. Why did, why did it fall not, Calvary? Why did it fall not? Because it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell. Why did it fall? And why was the fall of it so great? Because it was built upon sand. A simple exhortation, but I'm encouraging you, imploring you, pleading with you, and I'm and pledging to walk alongside you as you decide to build a life based upon the Bible. Now, a life based upon the rock of God's word won't look like every, every other worldly life. It won't be a carnal life. It'll be a, a holy life, but a joy-filled life. And I want to encourage you in 2022, in the time of drag queen, queen story hours, and we don't know what a male is and what a female is anymore, I want to encourage you to go ahead and build a life on the rock of God's word and do not be ashamed. Can I get somebody to write that in the chat? Do not be ashamed. Jesus said, if you've been ashamed of me in front of this generation, I'll be ashamed of you in front of, the, of, in front of my father, which is in heaven and the holy angels. I believe that's kind of the quote. And so do not be ashamed. If you know, God's word said it, well, that's the life I want to live. I want to live a life built upon the rock. If we go a little further, I want to pray and sing the Bible. You can decide today to fill your house with worship, right? We've said it recently quite a few times, but I, but I can't, I can't, it's hard to overestimate just how important this is. I mean, I understand you got to watch the news to see what's going on. I understand you want to take a look at your 401k and I, I know you're doing stuff for work and, and I know you got homework, some of you and things like that. But I want, to, I want to encourage you to have some part of your day where something that sounds like praise rings out in the house. You know, something that sounds like worship. I want, to, I want to encourage you to continue to make the decision that to be a man or woman of prayer, where you bow your head before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and you pray his word back to him, and you sing his word uh, back to him. I want to encourage you to do that. This first text is when they, when they prayed the scriptures back to God in Acts chapter four, I'm not going to read it, but you can read it a little later, just I'm running out of time. But Acts chapter four, verses 24 and 25, when the church was pressed, the local church, the early church was pressed, they prayed God's word back to him. And they were in, they ended up being filled with the spirit of God and speaking the word of God with boldness. Uh, Colossians three tells us to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with, with certain things, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So use some good spiritual songs, use some good hymns, but man, there's nothing like the actual song book in the Bible. Open up, the, we got to figure out how to sing psalms again, by the way, but open up the Bible and find a way to sing it. Uh, I want to encourage you that when you're afflicted, uh, pray, when you're married, sing psalms, uh, James 5, 13, fill your house with it. Don't, you know, don't just fill it with MSNBC and Fox, fill it, fill your home. Uh, with uh, with prayer and with worship make that you can make that decision now you know there's nothing stopping you from doing that next you know attend a bible believing teaching church y'all already know this one but who knows who might watch this one day or see this one day paul said the church uh, is supposed to be the uh, pillar and ground of truth he said there's a way to behave yourself in the house of god uh, which is the church of the living god he told timothy preach the word be instant uh, in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, all these things ought to be going on in the local church with all long suffering, right patience, but also with, with all doctrine. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, oh, by the way, I've never met anybody who says I will not endure, in, in, endure sound doctrine, but it happens. And I've never met anybody who, who you know, kind of went after uh, bad teachers with itching ears. No one ever admits to that. 
but it happens. And so I want to encourage you, it's really, really important if you think we're sound and, and teaching sound doctrine, then you know, be easy to find. Watch the sermons when you're away. Be connected. Be a good giver. Be a good member. Serve. Worship. You know, be a part. Uh, don't change a number and don't tell us, right? Uh, but be a part of, be a real integral part of a Bible believing and teaching church. It's critical right now. I'm saying you could, there's not enough money in the world for me to take my wife and children into some foolishness. It just it is too important. So re- think that through and then pray for us too as we're continuing to try to be this for, for our flock. Preach the gospel of the Bible. You can make this decision right now. This is a good decision to be a preacher of the gospel. You know the gospel, that he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. But oh, look at verse four. Surely he borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet did we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Hallelujah, somebody praise him, right? The chastisement of our peace was upon him and say it with me. And with his stripes, we we are healed. healed. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which ye also are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Beloved, this is the gospel that we have to preach that Christ died for our sins. Sin is transgression of the law. Our problem is a sin problem, a rebellion problem. This isn't about self-actualizing or getting a new Maserati. This is about the fact that we are rebels against a holy God, but God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son into the world that those he would call and choose would be saved, right? Is there any better news than that? And that hasn't changed. And even in the midst of COVID where people are scared about life and death and there's other things happening right now other than COVID, all kinds of, you know, know, sudden deaths. And it's just just a, it's it's something, it's crazy. But in the midst of it all, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to your children. Preach the gospel in your neighborhood. Don't forget the hope of glory is not in this world. It's not even in perfect health or, or great finances. The hope of this world is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The hope of glory is the hope of eternity. It is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and and wave at me and praise him right now. Really, it's not. I I mean, I I don't want to get sick either, right? But it's not, but but that's not my hope. My hope is not how well I do in my health, even though it's important. My hope is in the fact that Christ died for my sins. All of my transgressions, all of my wickedness has been cleared by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. I wish I was in church with y'all right now. It has been cleared by the blood of the lamb. And so even if COVID rises up and gets one of us or gets me, I'm going to lay my eyes down and close them. I'm going to wake up in the arms of Jesus. Now we're believing God for healing and, and all of that, but don't forget where the ultimate joy lies. And that's at Calvary. Bless the Lord. And then finally, train up your children according to the Bible. You can do that right now. You can make this decision right now. Even if you slacked off, you know, even if uh, the mountain seems a bit large here, even if there are obstacles standing in your way, trust the God of the Bible, right? When he says disciple them, that means you can do it and he'll equip you to do it. And so parents, I want to encourage grandparents, uh, who, who have real in, sway in the hearts and, and lives of your grandchildren, I want to encourage you to stay on that wall. Bible in one hand, sword in the other. I want to encourage you, stay on that wall. Keep teaching them. Keep, keep bringing them to church. Keep getting them involved. I don't know, what, what is this thing with, with parents and the kids are growing up in church and then they're still in your house and they're 17 and you just don't let them come to church anymore? What is that? I want to encourage you. No, no, that, you know, as long as you have sway, keep putting them under the gospel, keep them around Christian people who have the, who are indwelt by the spirit of God, keep, you know, waging that education battle. And it is indeed a battle and, uh, but keep fighting, keep teaching and keep doing family worship. Amen. And so these are decisions you can make now to re- to recap in what ways can you renew your faith in the word of God? Have you slipped over into, you know, what some politician says or what some physician says or what some entertainer says and letting their words 
supersede or, or be above the word of God? How can you better serve the Lord Jesus Christ right now? Yep, you're, we walk by faith, not by sight. And we certainly are in grace. So this isn't some legalism thing. But what could you do to give more honor and praise unto Christ? What areas in your life are out of alignment with scripture right now? You look at it and you look at your life, you look at the scripture, you look at your life, you look at the scripture, you look at your life. Well, how long you want to do that? And how long do I want to do that? Let's be honest about that. That's the decision you can make right now. What needs to change in your personal and household worship? You know, um, has it become boring or dull to you? You know, what, what has happened there and how, how might you go before the Lord to fix it? Mm -hmm. How can you better serve the, the local church? Yeah, I know it's, it's tough right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's a hard season in this area, but, mm -hmm. but the word of God remains the word of God. And so how can you better serve even our local church? You know, there's a plethora of needs. We need more singers. We need more musicians. We need, we need, we need, we need. There's always a need, right? And so how can you fill that gap and, uh, and get on the wall with us? When was the last time you shared the gospel? And that's a convicting question. And I, it's not a legalistic question. You know, it's, there's no quota here, but it's worth asking. I mean, and if your answer is, oh, let's see, 1990. Okay, maybe we maybe there needs to be an adjustment. So, uh, when was the last time you shared the gospel? And then, what adjustments must you make in discipling your own children? You know, and this that's that can be a that's a, that can be a tough one there too. Uh, but as they grow, things change a little bit on you, and you may have to adjust. So, what adjustment must you make in continuing uh, to raise up uh, godly godly children? Well, friends, that's really it. I'm looking at the time. I wanted to at least have time for you all to interact. Um, but just as a closing encouragement today, uh, this is something that I've, I've, I'm just living my life by right now, these three things, love deeply, hold loosely, trust the Lord. I want to encourage you to love deeply. And that means you, you kind of have to go beyond the norm. You know, really love our Lord uh, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then really love folk deeply in it, you know, your, your household and also the household of God. If you wonder, who do I love deeply? Well, it starts in your house and then it goes to the house of God and then it goes outside and then every, every other place, your neighbors and your coworkers and your friends and so forth. But love deeply. Ask yourself, you know, am I really giving, my, giving of myself to my, my husband or my wife or my children, to my local church, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Uh, to my fam you know, to my friends and co-workers and so forth, and according to the word. Hold temporary things loosely, right? Hold loosely, you know. Uh, you can't stop people from coming in and out of your life, even though it can be difficult. You can't, you know, you can't hold on to being 27 forever. You're 57 now, it's okay. Uh, you know, money comes and money goes. Uh, you know, health challenges are there, but your joy is not in temporary things. Your ultimate joy is in Christ. And so learn, let's learn how to hold on to stuff loosely love deeply but hold loosely and then finally trust the lord our god just just our confidence has to if we put our trust and i hope y'all have figured this out and i don't mean no harm so nobody get mad at me but if you're if your 100 trust is in pfizer it's not gonna work out for you it's just, it's just not if, it, if it's in a dollar bill right or twenty dollars it's not gonna work out for you right put your trust in the lord our god he is the only one that will absolutely never fail you. Absolutely. Even, even husbands and wives who love each other deeply make mistakes. But it's the Lord, our God, who, who never errs, will never fail you. And so love deeply, hold loosely, and trust the Lord. My prayer for you this week uh, is, is that you just have a fantastic week in the Lord. May the Lord heal all households of Omicron and, 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 and any other crons. Uh, cause I know we're, we've all it's kind of blown through a lot of households. Uh, if you're worried and stressed, don't forget your pastors are here. Your deacons are here. You got friends that love you. Be on the lookout for those who lost loved ones. I just heard this week of one of our, two of our families, one lost a grandfather, one lost a brother. Uh, and so please, uh, be on the lookout to, for encouragement, uh, along those lines. If you're looking for stuff to do with your time and you just don't want it to be on, on Instagram and meta. Uh, our website is just jam full of teaching, uh, church and family life website, the same generations.org, just tremendous books and stuff for your kids to read. Answers in Genesis uh, with Ken Ham, just a lot of good apologetics materials, Living Waters, help you reach out to folks with the gospel. I mean, these are just some of our favorites, but 
uh, we'll send these notes around to anybody that wants them. And so I believe we are, uh oh, are y'all still there? Okay, yes, y'all still there. There we go. And so I want to give y'all, we got a few minutes left. Just want to give you a time for any prayer requests. Uh, you know, time to interact because we kind of miss each other. And um, I'll, I'll kind of hush unless you have a question about anything you're going through. Feel free to fellowship, family. And I'll, let me see if I can start doing a little unmuting. And then you all can <laughs> mute as... Uh, Mute as you feel like you need to. So. Hi, hi. There we go. Hey, I heard family. Hi. Hey. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Love y'all. You ain't gotta leave though. Don't leave yet. We still got some time. Don't leave. <laughs> stay for two more minutes. Just stay for two more minutes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> morning. Hi, Bishop. Good morning. Hey. Good seeing everybody. Good to see you. Hey, everybody. <laughs> God bless you. Good, Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Angelica. Good morning. Oh, where's Angelica? Hey, Keisha. Good to see you. What's up, Johnny? Hey, how's it going? It's doing well, man. Hey, Kathy. Hey, family. Hey, Good morning, Good to see you. Hey, Latina and the Collins fam. Okay. Eddie, I see you out there. Michelle, I see you out there. Lillian, I see you out there. Brother Mel, how you doing? Kyle, I see y'all out there. Diana, good to see y'all. Alexis, morning. morning. Jared and Monroe, see y'all out there. Who's Queen It was a good morning, everyone. Yes, we're Hi, Denise. Morning. Hello. 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 Corey, where's that hey, baby, Brother man? Sam. Yeah, he, baby. She's with mommy right now. Okay, all right. Uh, Otherwise, good to see I, you. I'll, be, I'll be posting her everywhere, but she's with mommy right now. I got you. <laughs> good to see you, Drew. Y'all don't know Drew is like I in Europe. Boy. So, hey, Drew, what time wow. is hey, Drew in Europe? Hi. 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 It's, uh, it's a little after 5 p.m. Hi. 5 p.m. Okay, wow. good to see you, brother. Good to good see everybody. Hi, Mr. Corey. Hey, brother Drew. That's that's dedication there when you you in a whole series. Uh, five p.m. Man, yeah. I sleep somewhere. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You almost be doing something right over there. Amen. Hi. <laughs> What's up, free? <laughs> See you, man. See you. Well, guys, you know, as we as we get prepared to shut it down for the day, um, again, our our heart was to just keep you safe in the ice. If we're a little bit, we were a little bit overconfident or a little overcautious, rather, uh, please forgive us. But we we looked at the even this morning, we there were some reports of, of some ice out there, so that was kind of where we were with that. I want to pray for you as we as we close. Next week, um, you know, I looked at the weather so far, it looks good. Uh, I, again, I know there's a lot going on, but if y'all will be, uh, we, what I really want to see our church do is be more serious about corporate prayer. It starts at 945. We joke about it, uh, but I want you to consider making some real effort to, to be a part of, of corporate prayer. And uh, we're going to be talking about marriage. I got a, a message queued up on marriage next week and uh, and as we get into February, of course, Valentine's Day is a nice little time to, to do that. But uh, let's keep reaching out. There's so many unchurched people. There's so many unsaved people. There's so many people worried about, about sickness and death right now. So I don't, I don't want you to worry about sickness and death. I want you to trust the Lord, even as you're being wise with your body. But I also want you to have a, an eye towards those who, who need you, who need the word that God has put in you. Uh, and so it, it's a time, it's a time to be light, y'all. It's a time to do it by the Bible. It's a time to do it in love. It's a time to, to walk in holiness. It's a time to really be forgiving and, and bless. And, and it's a time where the enemy is really busy too. And so we read, don't forget that this is a spiritual war ultimately yeah. that we are fighting. And so, so drop all grudges, love real good, be faithful uh, let's also give strong today or you know, mail it in if you need to. Last couple of weeks were like, uh oh, right? So we really want to, let's see what we can do. Uh, and let me just pray for you. 
uh, as we get our as we get set <laughs> to go into uh, the next week. Father, I just want to again thank you for Calvary Reformation Church. We're not perfect, but we truly want to please you. We do. Uh, we want to honor you in everything that we do. We want to honor you in the way that we worship. We want to honor you in the things that we think and say, how we treat each other, how we love each other, forgive each other, repent to each other. Lord, the, the lives that we live when no one's looking, uh, Lord, we want those lives to, to line up with your word. Uh, Father, we ask that you would send your spirit of, upon us in power and that you'd fill us, Lord, with his presence, that we would be so aware of you as we go throughout our days and so aware of the people around us that are afraid for their lives or afraid for the country or afraid or afraid or afraid. Uh, Lord, you did not give us the spirit of fear, but love power and a sound mind. And so even as we are attempting to be good stewards and be cautious, we pray that caution doesn't trend over into walking by sight and not by faith. So we love you today. And I thank you for Calvary Reformation Church. Please heal those who need healing and touch their bodies. Heal homes, marriages. Uh, Lord, heal from covid uh, Lord, whatever, uh, protect our jobs, protect our children, and we'll be very careful to give you all of the glory. We got about a minute left, family. Can we take the last minute till we cut off and just praise him? Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's none like you, Lord. There's none like you. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thank you, Lord. There's just no one else. You're our hope, our strength, and our song. You're our strong power. We run to and are free. From everlasting to everlasting, Alpha and Omega. Absolutely. Thank you. There's none like you. Give us of our many and every transgressions. Give us of our sins and yield.